Hi, this is Mohamed Sokat and Manos Prilakis, presenting case 174 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case illustrating challenging guide wire advancement through the culprit lesion in a patient with STEMI. The patient presented with anterior STEMI, classic uh, findings and increased troponin, and was sent for emergent uh, coronary angiography and PCI. This is the diagnostic angiogram, which is a little challenging to interpret as uh, there is quite, quite some tortuosity earlier on. There is occlusion of the LAD. There is some faint feeling of the LAD distally through ipsilateral collaterals. And then when we look at the right coronary artery, it is also providing some epicardiac collateral supplying the distal LED. We were radial with a six friend guide, uh, which was an EBU4. We had a lot of difficulty engaging the vessel, but we ended up using a wire in the circumflex uh, to help us stabilize the guide. But then, despite multiple guide wires, Minamo, Samurai RC, and C on black, we were not able to cross through the LED. So this is the wire anchoring our guide catheter into the circumflex. And we had now a microcatheter. This is a turnpike LP. And we've tried several wires, workhorse wires and soft polymer jacketed wires. We could not cross through that occlusion of the LED. We then tried the Gladius Mongo, but once again, we were unsuccessful. We eventually exchanged for a Sasuke dual lumen microcatheter, through which we tried again the workhorse and the polymer jacketed guide wires without success. However, it was the Gaia second, which is a CTO guide wire with a 4 gram tip load. So, not something we typically use in myocardial infarction, but it does have a good torqueability and again a little stiffer tip. And eventually, with multiple trial and error approaches, this wire could successfully cross into the media LED. We then exchange it for a soft guide wire. Of course, we don't want to stand over a stiff tip guide wire. We predilated the intravascular ultrasound that demonstrated some calcification, although there was mainly soft plaque. And then uh, we predilated, uh, we placed the stand uh, into both LED as well as the diagonal branch post dilated and had a nice result as shown by intravascular ultrasound with good stand expansion. The minimum lumen area was 7 millimeters in the LED. And uh, the patient had a good outcome. So once again, these are the two categories of wires, the polymer jacketed and the stiff, especially the stiff polymer jacketed, that are typically used for CTO PCI. They're not typically used for regular PCI, especially the stiff tip guide wires. But in our case, the Gaia second 4 gram tip wire was successful in crossing this LED during STEMI. And this is the technique we used, which is using a dual loop microcatheter. We advanced the Sasuke into the side branch, and then uh, we had a second guide wire, the Gaia Next 2, to go through the over the wire lumen of the dual lumen microcaster, and that wire successfully crossed into the distal true lumen. So multiple lessons from this case. The first one, when you have difficulty with engagement through radial axis, one technique to stabilize the guide is advance uh, a wire into another vessel, for example, the circumflex in this patient, and use it to anchor the guide and help with advancing the other wire. Once you have a wire at the side branch of the proximal cap, one can use a dual lumen microcatheter, a Sasuke in this case, and also we used a CTO wire, the Gaia next to, which is a 4 gram wire, to wire through the LAD culprit lesion for the myocardial infarction. And finally, we did use intravascular imaging to optimize the result. We see that the distal vessel is diffusely diseased, likely because there was a pre-existing lesion that's chronic underperfusion of this segment. However, over time, we anticipate this vessel to grow and become larger. Thank you.